Whenever you think of low-cost travel within the United States, the first thing that comes to mind is Southwest Airlines. Not only for their wacky PR, their awesome livery designs, but also for their entire ethos of low-cost travel, they're considered as the world's largest low-cost carrier, and rightly so. But the airline was established by Herb Kelleher and Rolling King in 1976, called Air Southwest. But the naming of the airline as we know it today, came much later in 1971. Now they always dreamt of starting an airline, since the conventional airlines focused on long haul and they charged a lot of money, the low cost market was still a niche idea, but it was barely untapped. This was essentially their chance. Their presence slowly grew and word was getting out that a new airline was offering cheap tickets, so some of the giants in the industry tried to ground them by filing legal suits. The big airlines didn't want Southwest Ethos to change the market, so the airlines tried, but they ultimately failed. Now at the time of the official naming in 1971, they operated three Boeing 737-200s across its three destinations with over 60 flights per week. Despite the legal battles going on in the background, with Herb Kelleher at the realm, this wasn't really an issue for the airline. Also, for the first time they became profitable, and their business strategy has been the reason for their tremendous growth, even till this day. Now at one occasion, they were forced to fly an empty plane back to Dallas for the weekend servicing. They took advantage of that opening and priced tickets at $10. In the space of a few weeks, this flight was flying without an empty seat. They didn't focus too much on advertising and PR, because they believed what they had to offer was unique, and it was spread through word of mouth. And surely it did, because their competition was forced to decrease their prices also. But to many people, the airline is seen as cold-blooded and ruthless, which is something similar to Ryanair. They approach new airports and literally fold them and ask for cheap landing and gate costs. This is also the major reason that overall fares dropped in new markets. They still continue to have that impact when they enter a new airport. For example, after they began their service to Baltimore International in 1993, fares dropped by 70% and passenger traffic increased sevenfold. The company then started flying to Denver in January 2006. It now has 141 daily departures from there. Frontier Airlines, which is based in Denver, was wedged between Southwest and rising fuel costs. And unfortunately, they couldn't keep up. A similar thing happened in Las Vegas. They effectively drove out most of the competition from US Airways, which then went back to Phoenix. With 212 daily flights, Las Vegas is now Southwest's top city. Now even throughout their long history, it's been a tough ride for them. Many airlines in the US have adapted a similar strategy to that of Southwest Airlines, but it seems like they always end up on top. By 1982, it was able to expand itself to more than 22 new cities, including Oklahoma, San Diego, Las Vegas and etc. Just under 7 years later in 1989, they finally crossed the $1 billion in revenue. By that time, they were carrying more than 30 million passengers a year, and they became the 7th largest airline in the US. Now, as of 2018, the airline has approximately 57,000 employees and serves more than 4,000 flights per day. They're also recognized as the airline that carries the most domestic passengers of any US airline. But there's no doubt about it that they have inspired and influenced various other airlines around the world to do a similar thing. And when you break down the recipe, it's quite simple. High level of employee and aircraft utilization, low unit costs, and also a very short turnaround time. Now if you look over the pond to Europe's two of the best airlines, EasyJet and Ryanair, these two airlines follow Southwest business approach in the continent of Europe. Other airlines with a similar business model which is based on Southwest system consists of WestJet, AirAsia, Indigo, JetBlue, Cebu, Nokia, Volaris and so many more that we can just continue. Even though Southwest Airline has become a major influence and motivation to many other airlines, specifically Ryanair, the management approach of Ryanair, AirAsia and Jetstar varies significantly from those of Southwest. All of these different management approaches can be seen as a means of distinction from the other rival and competitors to be able to gain a competitive advantage. So there you go captains, that was the brief history of Southwest Airlines. I know there's a lot of information that may have been missed, but if you feel like there's anything worthy adding, then share it with us in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe for more aviation videos, and I hope to check you guys very soon.